Ladies and gentlemen, my name's James and welcome to your subscriber update for Divers Ready for November 2020. Just time for a quick update of everything that's happened this month behind the scenes at the channel and what you can look forward to in the upcoming month. And then as is the tradition with this series of videos, I will answer the questions that you guys have posted on social media using the hashtag AskDiversReady. Let's dive into it. The first thing that we've got to talk about is the Garmin Descent Mark II I. Yes, we got them. Yes, the reviewing is in process. A lot of you guys have been noticing that I've been wearing it as my daily wear watch in the videos we put out this month. And the review is coming, guys. At the time of recording this, I've got about 16 dives only on it. All of those dives were done in the last four days. About four weeks ago, we had Tropical Storm Etta skim past us. No damage, everyone's fine. Just a light tropical storm but it has dragged this huge low pressure system across South Florida that's just kind of sat over us and made conditions undiveable. So I've only been able to get out. We had a break last Sunday and started to dive. I've got a friend in town, Brian, he's in doing his deep and his rec courses. Um, so we managed to get a few dives done in the last few days. And long story short, guys, I, I love it. It's truly an epic piece of kit. But you're gonna to have to wait for my full review, which should be out the second week in December, for the pros and cons and everything that we're looking to do. Also, I haven't got the transmitter for it yet, so I haven't been able to judge how good the connectivity is for the air integrated features of this computer, but the transmitter's on the way, so hopefully I'll have that piece added on and it'll all come together to make one beautiful video. I love this thing so much that I actually went out and bought a brand new macro lens just thought I could shoot sexy B-roll sequences. What was that? You want a little sample of that sexy B-roll sequence? Your wish is my command. Whoa, 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 okay, that's enough. That was just a sneak peek, just to, just to whet your appetite. The full review will be out next month. I also wanna say thank you so much to all of you that have been supporting the Dive Right Gear maintenance series of videos. I'm so glad that you guys are writing in and letting me know that you're getting value out of that and that I'm helping you to protect the investment you've made in your dive gear. And I also wanna say thank you to everyone who's supporting our sponsor for that series, Dive Right by liking and following them on social media. It means the world to me, it helps me to keep making those videos for you. We're about halfway through that series now. We're three videos down, three to go. Don't forget, each video has an individual giveaway that you have to enter. So just, if you enter one, doesn't mean you're gonna be entered for each individual one. You've got to enter each series of contests to be in the draw. Each giveaway lasts for one month, so we've got a few that are active right now and a few more to come, so. Get, you've got to be in it to win it, guys. Thank you so much again. Really, really appreciate it. On to travel then. We just have one space remaining on our epic trip of a lifetime to the sardine run in South Africa. It is going to be spectacular. I'm so hyped for everyone that's already signed up for this trip. If you've been thinking about signing up, do not delay. We literally have one space left. So if you've got questions about it, reach out to us through our website, diversready.com, on the channel contact page, and I'm happy to answer any questions you've got. But the first deposit takes it. It's first come, first served, and that's the way it goes. Will we be running this trip in future years? I cannot guarantee that. Yeah. Right, let's see what you asked us this month with hashtag AskDiversReady. Uh, Eric Taylor asks, Dive right is A1, but I already threw out the foot pocket, what to do? Uh, thanks for your question, Eric. I believe you mean the foot pocket insert. If you threw away the foot pocket, then the rest of the fin is useless, but yeah. So if you threw away the foot pocket insert, that's the piece of plastic that keeps the shape of your foot pocket. 
the best thing you can do is take a couple of old t-shirts, ball them up and shove them into the foot pocket and that's going to help you when you store your fins. I do the same thing when I travel. I take my dive gear bag out. Fins are usually the first thing that get packed because they give nice amount of stability to the bottom of the bag, but I don't want the foot pockets to get crushed. So I normally take a couple of t-shirts that I was going to pack anyway, ball them up, shove them into the foot pockets and it just helps them hold their shape while they're in transit. Thanks so much for your question, Eric. Uh, Wade Doucet asks, how do you manage liability risk with rental kit? Does this fall under the umbrella of your pro agency insurance? Uh, the short answer to that is yes, it does. It's actually an add-on that you have to select when you're buying the insurance. Um, but yes, it is part of my professional liability insurance. The other thing I have to do to manage that risk is to make sure that I get all my uh, life support equipment serviced by authorized technicians. So for example, take my regulators, the XTX50 that I rent out for recreational regs. Um, I have to make sure that they're serviced by an authorized service technician. I can pretty much take apart any set of regs you give me, put it back together again. I've seen them and done them all, but I'm not an authorized technician. So I still have to send those regs out, and I've got a friend who is an authorized service tech, uh, to get them to do it so that they run the paperwork through. So if there ever was an issue, I can't be held accountable because those regs were serviced, serviced by an authorized technician. So thanks for that question. But yes, it does come under pro liability insurance. Absolutely. Um, Hilly Billy EFFE. Now there's a username. James, why does SDI have two advanced diver courses and why does the advanced adventurer only go to 100 feet when all other agencies go to the full 130 feet? I feel like this is just a ploy to get us to spend more money on courses. What is your professional answer? Thank you for your question, Billy. Uh, my professional answer is this. There's some inaccuracies in your question, okay? Nearly all training agencies now have this kind of two level approach to the second level diver training. So we call it advanced, advanced adventure, whatever. You have the basic one, which is your four or five dives, which each have a theme dive, they're a taster dive, and that's your light certification, which is normally your 100 foot cert. Then you have the divers where you do the full specialty courses. And if you do a full deep specialty course, as part of that, you're certified to 130 feet. So it's not just an SDI thing, it's you know, Paddy has master scuba diver where you have to do, you know, five specialties. You're probably going to do your deep one with that. And they all have this kind of two level. But I think pretty much every single training agency has a hundred foot certification. It's just whether you do that and a deep specialty or if they make it obligatory or optional. So if you're never going to go to 130 feet, if you're only ever going to dive 100 feet, you don't need to pay to do an additional deep diver course with SDI. Um, so yeah, you can do one or the other. You don't have to do both as well, which I think is part of the question you're asking there. Thank you so much for your question. I hope I answered that satisfactorily. Um, Seb asks, hi James, just out of curiosity, what is your personal mask? What mask do you use most often? Well, Seb, I have a big gorilla head with a big Roman nose. So I find that the Apex VX1 mask fits me really, really nicely. I've also used Scuba Pro Frameless before, and I've used a mask by Tusa for many, many years that I can't remember what the model name was, but it was nice and big and wide, and it fit my big, fat face. Appreciate it. Thank you, Seb. Thanks for the question. Prickly Heat One asks, James, once we have washed our gear, where should we store it? Is there any concern that storing gear in non-climate controlled settings, garage, shed, will lead to it degrading? For reference, I live just up I-95 in West Palm Beach, so it's always warm here. My biggest concern is the extreme heat of the summer months. Absolutely prickly heat. You're very, very good to ask that question. When we lived at the previous place, the old studio, um, there was some dive gear that we would keep in the house in climate control and some we would leave in the garage. Tanks, fins, anything that was majority metal lived out in the garage. Any electronics, anything with rubber or silicon, that could, well not silicon, but rubber or plastics that could degrade. Anything with moving parts like regulators and BCDs was all kept in climate control environment. It gets over 110 degrees in a, in a garage in Florida in the summer. That's, uh, that's not a temperature you wanna be storing dive gear at. So as best as possible for as much space as you have, absolutely try and store all your equipment in climate control. That's why I made sure that we sealed up this garage, former garage, and put in air conditioning. I know everyone doesn't have this luxury, but as best you can, move as much stuff into climate control as possible. If you're ever in doubt, always read the manufacturer's instructions as to 
what temperature each piece of equipment should be stored at or, or sort of what kind of range. Hope that answered your question, Prickly Heat One. Appreciate it. Mike Oakley asks, James, when are you going to give away your Union Jack gear case? Um, I can answer that one real simply, Mike. Uh, never. No. That's mine. I found it in an antique shop here in Miami, and uh, it's mine now, so I'm sorry. Um, I know you're an expat living in Arizona, and uh, you probably want to get your, uh, your grubby little hands on my gear case, but you, you can't have it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's it. Right, that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. All that remains is for me to wish my American Dive Buddies a very, very happy Thanksgiving. And to everyone out there, I hope you're staying safe during all of this craziness that's going on right now. I really do mean it. I want everyone to stay safe and stay healthy. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your November 2020 channel update and Q&A from Divers Ready. Dive safe, dive often.